Good morning, burbs. My name is Azalara, and honestly, ever since the PSO2 New Genesis Prologue 1 livestream, my hype and fire and everything has been absolutely rekindled, thanks to all the everything that they provided us in terms of seeing the character creation, the gameplay, and, well, the quite literally endless amount of memes and nightmares and, um, just a lot of things. But I mean, all in all, right, it's, it's a really good thing that all of this exists because it makes it really, really an exciting experience for all the players and the community as well. For us to have like things to be hyped over, for us to have fun, for us to be engaging about a lot of these things. You know, with like a lot of these memes and all, people are going to have so much fun just like posting all over the internet. Be like, you know, yo man, the NGS Ash face or like the Rupika or like the lobby actions or like the super lewd stuff or like the everything. Like you, you name it, okay? You name it because... PSO2 New Genesis, one, one of the things that they are marketing it for is that the game is kind of trying to market itself to be like the best beyond ultimate character creator with no boundaries and things like that. And well, if they can spawn an endless amount of memes and fun, I would say they are doing exactly their job really well. Like, Sega is literally just embracing the fact now that their entire character creation can either be just really, really good or really, really meme. And I appreciate that. So now, while this video is not going to be exactly a recap video of the PSO2 New Genesis Prologue stream, I wanted to make this video to open up a discussion with a lot of you guys about more or less the gameplay and the classes of PSO2 New Genesis. I feel like this topic is something definitely worth getting into, because from the Tokyo Game Show stream to this stream right now, we do have enough information and gameplay to make at least some like nice predictions of like, hey, this is exactly how the class is going to be played out or something like that. And most important of all, I do think it's a very fun topic to really just get into and really just open up a discussion about. Now, just to be clear, all of this is completely speculative. These are personal thoughts and feelings based on how I feel about the game as a veteran and how I see MGS is going to shape the gameplay style into something special by just looking at all the video clips and all the gameplay footage that is provided from these two live streams. Which means that nothing I can say over here is like 100% conclusive, but it might be close enough to the truth, who knows. But anyways, what I can say for sure is that they did say that the gameplay that you're seeing on this livestream footage here is going to be exactly what is played in the closed beta of New Genesis coming up very, very soon. But Hazel, if none of this is conclusive at all, why are you making a video covering it? Well... Honestly, sometimes speculation is fun, and then it also helps build the community more interest and hype and more discussions and things of the sort, so I think it's a pretty cool idea. So if you have any like thoughts, predictions, impressions, or anything of the sort you want to share, let's make a discussion down in the comments below. I think it will be a very fun discussion, so that we can just talk about everything up until the beta of New Genesis, and then the next livestream that they're going to be conducting right after the beta ends. Without further ado, Let's take a look at all the footage and whatnot then, and see what's shaking bacon in New Genesis. So from the livestream, New Genesis is now confirmed to only have 6 classes, although they have also confirmed that there will be more classes added in the near future. Now for anyone who's actually worried if like, oh no, the classes only have one weapon, because trust me, I was really concerned too, but at least they confirmed that, hey, this is something they will be doing for the closed beta, which means that all the other weapon type for the other classes will be revealed at a later date. I mean, for a good example, we did see that in the opening movie of PSO2 New Genesis, Sue here is actually using a twin dagger. So I think honestly it's really easy to confirm that twin daggers will be in the game at the very least, so getting to know that Fighter at least has two of their signature weapons now feels really, really good. And even more than that, honestly, it just makes me more excited to see what classes and weapon will be revealed next before the launch of New Genesis. Or even if they do launch a game with only 6 classes, I think it's pretty satisfactory, considering how PSO2 itself did start off with only 3. Coupled with the fact that there's still a lot of unknowns in the game, and there's still a lot that we still just simply don't know because they have not revealed the information yet. But before we go into all those details, let's take a look at the basics of the game and how it differs from PSO2 as a whole. So the first thing I would like to look at is the normal attacks, and I believe that it is a lot more relevant now in New Genesis than in actual PSO2. Because every class actually has a very different type of normal attack. Hunter and Fighter, for example, actually has a 5 combo now instead of a 3 combo normally. And attack number 5 will hit as hard as or even harder than a photon art. Although speaking of photon art, it's actually shown on the stream that for each weapon, there's only 3 PAs for now. 
But I'm not necessarily worried about this because they can always add PAs later and also it has been shown that PAs do act differently whether it's say they are hold down or tapped. The mechanic is like a little bit similar to the successor classes in PSO2, whether you hold or tap a PA. But for a visual example, try taking a look at this clip right here. This specific attack right here I believe is the held down Nova Strike. As you can see it's one big slash with a lingering effect. However if it is tapped, as you can see from this footage, it actually works completely differently. It basically turns Ash into more or less like a helicopter blade or something. So what I'm saying is instead of having like 3 PAs, it's more or less kind of possibly 6. While I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be something that's going to be reoccurring for every class or not, it is definitely true for Hunter. And also to a large extent to Force as well, and possibly Tekker. That and there's also the fact that literally every single class has this dodge counter mechanic, much like a lot of the current successor slash scion classes in the current PSO2. So you use your step to dodge an enemy attack, and then use a normal attack to counter it with a really hard hitting hit. I think it's pretty cool to have all these mechanics be like a universal mechanic instead of like a class specific thing, but in a way I guess you can say it also takes away a little bit of the class's special flair I guess. For example like, you know, if every class just has a counter, like why is force supposed to be a counter class again? Well maybe not a counter class, but like having a counter mechanic on force feels kind of really off honestly in my opinion. I just feel it would be such a much more better fit on like the hunter and fighter classes which are like the in your face classes that are always in combat and things like that but I don't know maybe it's just me but giving a counter attack to like the force and rangers is a little weird and probably just makes the countering feel a little not too special for some of the other classes after all. But in another way, it also can be said that it's kind of like a mechanic for every class to be able to fight and combat in just about every style, because just because you do have a counter in your disposal does not mean that you have to actively go for it. But hey, that's why we're making this video to begin with, right? Let me know what all of you think about this in the comments below. Now speaking of class identity, NGS will be running with a new weapon system called the multi-weapon system. In other words, you can easily put your photon arts and actions of another weapon onto your one palette. And so for example, in the footage here, we are seeing a hunter ranger player. As you can see on the palette, there is a normal attack for the sword, the ranger's weapon action, and the ranger's homing emission photon art. So despite having the sword out, if you press the weapon action of the ranger, you will immediately swap to the ranger rifle, and then perform the weapon action and then switch back to your sword immediately. You will not have to quote unquote swap weapons anymore because it's going to be just implemented into the multi-weapon system in itself. So unlike the hero class in PSO2, you don't have to like perform a PA to like swap to a different weapon or press your palette and swap to a different weapon. Basically, if you just press another PA from another weapon on your palette, you will be able to easily just use the photon arts from the other classes and swap your weapon to that weapon type immediately. So there will be no delay in switching at all. And this allows for extremely hybrid types of gameplay, for example as we see here, using the force and fighter, so you just basically just freeze the enemy with bardas and then suddenly just change to knuckles and then just do flash thousands or whatever that is available. Thus here relegating force to more of a status effect class rather than the main damage. And while I know and understand that this is super cool for a lot of people who want to try a lot of things, but as a veteran player and someone who's been you know, to the end game of PSO2 and hell and back, for I don't know how many times in the past 8 years, well, the effectiveness of actually doing this could easily be argued whether it's going to be good or not. We really don't know. There is of course a world where people can just utilize all the weapons perfectly in the perfect situations, for example say like the time attack speedrunners or something like that of the sort, but this also leaves a huge concern because we don't know how the skill tree systems of PSO2 New Genesis is going to be like. One of the biggest problems in regular PSO2 of running the hybrid classes is the fact that we just don't have enough skill points to skill everything. Braver was a huge offense of this, because back then you simply did not have enough skill points in your skill tree to literally fill out the multipliers for all the katana stuff and then all the bullet bow stuff. That and also back then it's 10 times harder to affix anything compared to what it is nowadays because back then like 5 slots is like super whale territory, the standard for fixing generally is like 2 slot 3 slot weapons. So we just don't have the luxury to go like, hey, let's go striking attack, or let's go range attack, or let's go, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, nowadays we can just do all attack, easy. But back then, it was a nightmare. 
and that is something I'm super concerned about for New Genesis, seeing all these cool combos, but I also understand it's a huge concern for a lot of people, including myself, but hey, New Genesis did one thing right, and they did combine the attack types to, well, literally just attack. At the very least though, with knowing this, it's really easy to say that the hybrids can work a lot better because it's literally just one attack type. So for example, the Ranger Force stuff like that. Like, you know nobody plays Ranger Force because multipliers are completely different, you know? Like in the Ranger Tree, the multipliers are for range attack and then for force, well, the multipliers are for tech attack and just techniques and elements in general. If we're basing everything off what we're seeing right now, well, I mean, it's one attack type so all those multipliers are literally irrelevant because everything is now uniform. But regardless of what, it's still really not as easy to really say whether or not, you know, playing hybrid will be super effective or not, because, well, first of all, we don't even get to test or really see how the systems are gonna work yet because the game's not out. And also the hard part of seeing whether this is actually the case or not will actually take a very long time because in the easy contents when the new game comes out, anything and everything that you use will easily be effective because the enemies are just simply that weak. So honestly, it might actually take a, quite a while for us to really see whether or not this is going to be something very, very good or very, very bad. But yeah, I might actually just be looking a little too deep into this, but well, can't help it. I'm just a passionate guy for PSO2, okay? <laughs> Anyways, systematically aside now, let's look at the over... Yeah, I can't even speak right now. Let's take a look at the classes a little bit more in detail now that we have the footage from PSO2 NGS's prologue stream number one. So the Hunter class is more of like a mobbing-ish class that does a very respectable amount of damage and is also based on counters and good timings. The class here is represented by none other than Ash. Or well, NGS Ash, as I would call him. So Hunter has a 5 normal attack combo. Normal attacks 1 to 4 only does a normal amount of damage, while normal attack number 5 does as much or even more damage than a photon art would do. It is also important to note that once you perform a successful counter, you will be able to use your normal attack right after the counter to perform your fifth normal attack. So it actually really does reward you for countering successfully. I've also noticed that there is a PA that uses the icon of Ignition Parry or something very similar to it, so this only solidifies that this is going to be a very action and counter based class. Aside from this, the other two PAs look like something around the lines of a Rising Slash and a Nova Strike. And also it seems that we'll have something similar to Imperial Cleave as well, but there's no real information about that at the moment. But overall I feel like it's going to be just something really really straightforward. All you have to really get used to is just doing your 5th normals and all that, but that's about it really. Everything else? Standard gameplay procedure. Now Ranger is where it gets a little bit interesting. Represented by the cast Gyrium, Ranger in PSO2 New Genesis provides a new complete different gameplay experience from Ranger in PSO2. The normal attack is actually a hold down normal attack kind of style, where it shoots endlessly without stopping. However, unlike Hero TMG, it does not drain your PP. Instead, these attacks actually restore your PP. So it might be a little weird to get used to it at first, because it's not a normal like 1-2-3 attack combo or anything like that, it's just only a normal stream attack. Although, you can actually move around with it, so it's not really as restrictive. And the most interesting part about it also is that your weapon action is a little bit like a repositioning. If you've ever played Luster before in regular PSO2, the weapon action of PSO2 NGS's Ranger basically feels like you're playing Luster. It shoots out the small bursts of bullets while also helping you reposition to a better position. And positioning is very, very important in PSO2 NGS when it comes to Ranger because for lack of a better term, we do have this thing now called the critical distance. Totally not borrowed from Monster Hunter by the way. But basically the general idea of this is that you need to be at a perfect range to do maximum amount of damage. If you're too close, you won't do as much damage. If you're too far, you won't do as much damage as well. So you have to reposition yourself and find that perfect quote unquote critical distance to deal as much damage as possible. Now the three photon arts that we do see of this so far is one, something along the lines of a parallel slider. So it might feel a little bit like your normal attack, but it will deal a lot more damage than your normal attack, so that's pretty cool. Next is something along the lines of like a small enemy track or aiming shot kind of thing. You shoot out this like small piercing bullet. Well, it's kind of a little bit big, but it's still pretty small. But you, you get what I mean. So it feels like something you can just quick charge and just do a nice amount of damage to. And you can also move, of course, while doing this. And the last one is literally just homing emission, but on crack. It definitely feels like you can track up to like a crack ton of enemies. And visually, it also looks super cool too. So... Aside from all this, we're not sure if there's going to be headshot multipliers in PSO2 NGS like the regular PSO2 because it was never really shown or confirmed. 
Although it is important to note also that ZM or over the shoulder view, whatever you might want to call it, is still a thing, so definitely headshots are a possibility. That is one thing to keep an eye out. And then having to manage your critical distance might actually be difficult too. I don't know how much it will differ from like each photon art to photon art, but having to reposition and keep up all those things in mind all the time, it's a lot of things to really manage, honestly. But the bright side out of all of it is the fact that the gameplay just doesn't feel as stationary anymore as the normal PSO2 Ranger, so it's going to be a very, very cool changeup for a lot of Ranger players in PSO2. And probably a lot of like run and gun shooter fans would probably enjoy too. Now nextly for Force, it feels kind of like you're kind of mixing Force and Etoile anyways, since the meta is Force Etoile in PSO2. Kappa. The Force class here in PSO2 New Genesis, as represented by our beloved Rubika, as of the current time, has access to three types of techniques, which is Foye, Zonde, and Barta, for Fire, Lightning, and Ice respectively. It seems that techniques can just be normally spammed here and there for status effects and whatnot as well, and then charging the techniques just make it act differently. For example, for the Foye tech, just spamming it normally is like you're just shooting normal Foyes, while if you actually charge the Foye, it makes it feel like you're shooting a raw Foye out instead of a normal Foye. I really can't tell if it's actually more effective to just spam the normal text without charging it because charged text feels a little underwhelming from what we've seen in the gameplays. But at least the one cool thing is that Force now has a weapon action as a guard, so uh, I don't know, it feels a little out of place, right? Like Force can guard? You're not supposed to really be a tanky class. Honestly, I really don't know if you get any kind of like special attack or bonuses when you guard with Force. And the normal attacks doesn't really look like anything special either. Although from the gameplay that was provided anyways, I feel like Force is going to be a very critical class in terms of actually just locking down bosses and things like that because status effect seems to be a pretty big thing back again in PSO2 NGS. How important is this? I really have no idea. But as of the current state, from what we've seen, I feel like Force easily is probably going to be one of if not the weakest classes and probably relegated to a support. Because if anyone would know, Playing Force on 100 PP with basically like almost no access to really viable PP regen and just running out of PP all the time and not really doing much really doesn't feel good. But then again, that's kind of like the normal cycle of these Force classes or Caster classes in games like these where you just get super super strong later on, but in the beginning, you might have a lot of difficulties. But anyways, like I said though, I feel like it's going to really hinge on how important or how impactful the status effects will be in PSO2 New Genesis. I really genuinely do hope that Force becomes a lot more of a dynamic class in the future. Kind of like what they did with Phantom, that would be perfect. Now to look at the more interesting stuff that got introduced this stream, let's start off with Fighter. As represented by Creek here, Fighter here actually feels a little bit like Hunter in that it has 5 normal attacks, with the 5th attack being the slam down, and then instead of the guard weapon action, it has the sway, in which after you do the sway, you do a nice counter attack. I feel like a lot of fighters gameplay will really hinge on if you can actually sway and cancel out of your normal animations. Because there are some animations that just take really really long. For example, this first PA here is basically something of a flash thousand. But then at the end of the PA, you do this one nice uppercut swing. Which, this is actually part of the Flash 1000 PA because I've looked at the PP bar and basically it doesn't even decrease when it does the uppercut, so this one's actually part of the PA. Although for the second one here that he does the Flash 1000 on the clip, he ended it with another PA which seems to be some sort of like a charging hit, kind of like a heartless impact but faster. Or you can also compare it to Luster's Full Metal style quick shoot. And the reason why I can tell it's either another PA or like an additional action or something like that is because if you notice the PP bar, it does consume a secondary amount of PP right here. Unlike the uppercut where it does not consume additional PP. But yeah, overall, just with the normal attack gameplay and everything, I feel like this is already going to be a very very nice and action class where it feels a lot like Hunter, but more action focused. I'll be more than interested to see what this is going to be like when Double Saber and Twin Daggers come into the game. But until then, let's look at everyone's favorite cast gunner. Represented by Eleanor, PSO2 New Genesis's gunner class feels very familiar to the same PSO2. Stylish roll is back once again as a weapon action, and this time it does not look like there is a slow motion on the third roll anymore. You can also do the front roll by default now too. Now the three PAs of gunner right here feels pretty dynamic. The first one looks like something taken a little bit out of Hero's Brand New Star, but significantly faster and doesn't do that huge AoE damage. The second one is shift period, although there are two parts to the PA. 
The first part looks like it's borrowed from Etoile's Radiant Sting from the Dual Blades, which then seamlessly connects into the shift period. But all of this is only one PA, because as you can see from the PP bar, it doesn't consume more than once. And then the third PA basically feels like satellite aim, but better. Instead it actually feels like they took the animation from the complex PA's last two hits. So I think it would feel really really good overall. And now the chain system is also back. I'm not entirely sure how they activated it because I don't see it anywhere in the palette. We only see it from like a charge something something. So we'll have to see how this works in the near future. But regardless, the chain is not on a specific enemy part now. The counter is actually on yourself. So how this works is basically you just build up chain like normal, but then the next PA you activate is the PA that quote unquote pops the chain. So it can be hit anywhere. You don't have to worry about enemy parts breaking anymore and breaking your chain. So overall, I feel like Gunner is just a huge improvement from the regular PSO2 Gunner. It keeps just about every gimmick possible, even including the chain and the S-roll. I feel like any PSO2 player who has played Gunner before can just seamlessly move into MGS no problem, because it basically feels more or less the same. This one gets bonus points from me. And the last one here is Tekker, represented by Karis. Now, Tekker kind of falls into a really, really weird category where it's kind of like a force, but also not a force. The techniques are exactly the same as Force in Foyer, Zonde, and Barta, however this is exactly where the difference comes in. Tekker plays basically just like the normal PS2 where there is one gear explosions. How you control the element of the one gear here in PS2 NGS is it will match the element of the last tech you casted. In example, if your last used tech was a Foyer one, then your one smacks will have fire imbued to it. And then for example if you've been using Barta, then your one smacks will be ice. But then here as you can see, the mechanics actually fit Tekker a lot better than Force, in that Tekker also has a guard on the weapon action just like Force. Although I don't know if you do have like a special attack after the guard or not, but it's still really nice to have a guard. And especially if you have an empowered attack right after you dodge an enemy with your step. Oh man, Tekker is going to be so much fun to play and honestly this looks so much more fun than Force, I'm so sorry. And with that, concludes all the 6 classes of PSO2 New Genesis. So after this now, what do you all think about the new gameplay changes and all? Do you think that NGS will fall into the same trap that PSO2 did with the multipliers? Will hybrid classes truly be a thing? Or is all this just a pipe dream for show? We'll probably know our answer when the game comes out, which is like, I don't know, a few months out? But yeah, um, let me know in the comments what you think about all of this and also which classes or weapons you're interested the most right now and which ones you are very interested in seeing in NGS. Personally for me, I feel like when Dual Blade comes out with Bouncer, it's probably gonna be one of if not the biggest highlights, if the katana from the Braver doesn't already steal the show at that point. That and also I'm particularly very interested in Double Saber now and Twin Daggers as well, because as seeing how fluid Fighter's Knuckles are, I'm really really keen to see the gameplay of the other two weapons as well whenever that one gets implemented. But yeah, that is all for me. I wanted to create this video just to have like a little bit more, you know, fun and interesting like theory crafting and just a little bit more entertainment for all of you guys. So until we have more information and all, please feel free to poke me on Discord, link in the description below if you want to chat about any more of this stuff, or whenever we get more information, I'll probably make this type of video again. So with all that said, take care of yourself, and don't forget to smile! I'll see all of you very soon!